Hello everyone and welcome to another VAS Aviation video. Uh, today we are going to discuss about the uh, Lufthansa incident in San Francisco where they were receiving extensive delay vectors because they could not accept visual approaches at night so uh, they received extensive delay vectors around San Francisco and eventually diverted to Oakland. After the massive amount of comments in the video, uh, a good friend and a good contact that I have over there in San Francisco who is a approach controller and Norcal controller in San Francisco uh, reached me via Facebook to explain some of the situation. He was there. Um, he's not the controller <laughs> in the video, but he's there and he knows a lot about the San Francisco area, of course and he's a controller there so uh, he will give his point of view and I will try to discuss all this just to um, try to soften the the moods a little bit about this controller and also about this situation which uh, I think I, I didn't think well I was editing the video that it was going to be so viral and so um, I, I don't know some people f feel angry about this situation but I think it's perfectly common and an aircraft ended up diverting which is also normal <laughs> in the uh, daily aviation so I can break away like I thought to send you a voice message so I'll just type this obviously isn't Lufthansa's first time flying into SFO San Francisco and they aren't, and they aren't even the first aircraft that we've had to delay for an ILS we used to, like a year ago or so, be able to use visual approach, visual separation during VMC conditions with an aircraft on an ILS approach and another aircraft side by side or slightly ahead on the parallel runway. Even though they were flying the localizer and glide slope, they were still paired up side by side or slightly staggered with other traffic and maintaining visual separation we could keep our arrival rate up and flow in more traffic without incident. After a couple foreign aircraft complained that they were getting some fluctuations on the ILS and they think it's due to parallel traffic being slightly ahead of them, the FIA reviews those situations and came down with a ruling, you know how it has been a pilot, the people that make the rules are flying a desk most of the time and out of touch with the day-to-day -day challenges of the job stating that we can no longer use visual separation when an aircraft is on an ILS approach regardless of flight conditions. So we have, build, we have to build in standard separation. When you consider that we have two runways, that means instead of two aircraft four miles apart like this, so this is a, a diagram of the parallel approach, we have two aircraft here, two aircraft here going in the direction of the runway. We have to boot the ILS by itself and if it's a heavy, provide standard separation behind which is usually five to eight miles depending on the type. So now you have to build a hole like this. So you have the same except that for the right you have this aircraft with a bigger separation behind and even a bigger separation on the left runway on this bottom line because you cannot interpolate more airplanes here so you lose a few miles with the aircraft directly behind and even more with aircraft on the left. The controllers and frontline managers complain extensively about this new rule interpretation and the guidance we received from Uptown is that if we are advertising charted visual approaches or visuals on the ATIS, that is the approach air crews can expect to fly. If they request something else, we should accommodate them to the best of our ability, but they may have to take a delay. They view it as the same as if you flew in, requ flew in requesting an opposite direction landing on 10 when the active runway is 28, and I absolutely agree with him about this. Imagine the airport is operating 28, and for whatever reason, uh, your performance whether wind direction or whatever you request landing on two on ten or even departing on ten because the wind is more favorable for you for departure or whatever your performance calculations of course they have to accommodate you or they can accommodate you 
bad expect delays because the airport is operating on runway 28 and you are requesting something different from the airport operations so I think it's the same here the airport is operating is actually stated on the 80s and we'll listen to that now is operating visual approaches so if you request something different they can accommodate you but of course expect delay because you know they they don't work second by second the streams of arrivals were already there and already built from miles and miles away from San Francisco so of course it's not it's not easy and uh, of course it's not only uh, Lufthansa like in the vi in my video it's not only Lufthansa in the airspace and we'll see that here in a second as well with flight radar um, if you were one of the persons that thought that really thought that Lufthansa was the only aircraft in the airspace at that moment this is the video to let you know that absolutely not uh, Lufthansa was one of many airplanes in the only in the San Francisco airspace at that time Local approach, good evening, Lufthansa 458 Heavy, passing 15,900, descending 11,000, information Delta. So this is the first call from Lufthansa in the Norcal frequency. Uh, information Delta, it's crystal clear from them. San Francisco International Airport, ATS Information Delta, 0256 Zulu, wind 260 at 10. Visibility one zero. Your cloud at two thousand six hundred. Two zero thousand hundred. Temperature one niner. Two point one six. Altimeter three zero zero six. Remark. AO two C level pressure one seven eight five five zero zero two. Simultaneous charted visual flight procedures in use. And that's the important thing simultaneous charted visual approaches in use so of course yes it's on the 80s we are using simultaneous visual approaches or operations here in San Francisco those are in use if you're requesting anything else and we'll continue with the 80s now you are out of the normal operations of the airport so you have to expect some delay if we cannot accommodate you right away if you really need it, sure, we'll get it for you, but you're going to wait until we have the time or room to do that. It's a request, not an emergency, and we'll talk about emergency now in a second because, because some people were saying like, hey, declare an emergency or whatever, and you just go right away to San Francisco. No, that's not how aviation works. It's not an uncommon request for the ILS while we're on visuals. We if we can get them in without a delay we'll absolutely do that even if it changes our sequence slightly we have no problem with it but if it's going to result in us having to break a stream of arrivals five miles apart from Salt Lake City to San Francisco in order to slam that guy in there we'll tell you it's going to be a delay we aren't going to vector 40 aircraft and take them off the arrival and assign speeds and headings and introduce more risk to those passengers and pilots in order to prioritize a special request. Of course, I commented this same thing in some comments of the video. You cannot prioritize Lufthansa by sacrificing other airplanes it's not like that it's not that easy trust me and I am not an air traffic controller I'm a commercial pilot but I understand that it's not that easy especially in busy airports very major airports as San Francisco is of course it's, and as I said the sequences are built from miles away so it's not easy if the if the sequence is already tied from miles away it's not easy to make that gap and I understand controllers there so let's go back to uh, flight radar and see the actual image of the airspace at that time so here's the actual image of the uh, airspace there I've filtered for San Francisco arrivals so we are only seeing San Francisco arrivals at this time so if we get rid of the filter this is the air the airspace at the time which would be I think it's about 8 or 9 in the evening we have Lufthansa coming from the northwest and this is all the airplanes except for some helicopters or 
military activity, as we know, in flight radar. Uh, let's filter again for San Francisco. And let's go only for the inbounds, okay? So, yeah, this is all the inbounds that we have at this moment. So the first call and the north call approach would be approximately about here. Uh, maybe a bit earlier, okay? But just, just for reference, we have Lufthansa going just overhead San Francisco right here. And here's what we have a pretty decent stream of arrivals coming from the east. Another one coming from the south, maybe a bit more gaps there. And a few more airplanes coming from the west and northwest. At this time is when Lufthansa reports he is unable to follow visual approaches and he is replied to, okay, you will you will have some delays for the ILS, which is your request. We have some airplanes here that I saw before. We have the Philippines, these Philippines, because somebody in the comments said that uh, foreign or some of the uh, foreign air airlines were not allowed to do visual approaches at night after the Air Canada incident. So I saw these Philippines and also I saw this Virgin from the United Kingdom and let's see what those aircraft received, what approach. Philippine 104, heavy or nine or miles from Viet maintain 2,600 to establish on local project to ILS to a left approach. That is here for the ILS approach of 2 feet left, Philippine 104, heavy. Okay, so now we know that the Philippine airplane did indeed receive the ILS. Okay, that's good. How is that? If we go a little earlier and we see the Philippine, we just see this gap in here. I don't know if Philippine requested the ILS before, okay? I didn't go that far back. But we did see this gap in between American 2933 and Frontier 1523. This gap in here is the perfect gap for Pilip Philippines. And if we continue ahead, that's the gap where Philippines fill in just inside of uh, Frontier 1523. Now let's go for Vir Virgin 41 Romeo, 41 Romeo, because some people said that most of the European airlines were not allowed in their SOP, which is the standard operating procedures, to do visual approaches at night. So let's see. Virgin 41 Romeo, heavy traffic at 11 o'clock, 6 miles northbound, 4,000 left, 8628 left. Heavy Boeing 777, possibly 313, Virgin Romeo, 43. That's copied at 14 site, Virgin 4 Romeo, heavy. Virgin 41 Romeo, heavy, just going to maintain 5,000, set the traffic in the airport, we're into. Send 5,000, then 8 um, traffic and airport in sight, version 4 Romeo Heavy. Version 4 1 Romeo Heavy, maintain visual separation, clear quiet bridge, visual 2 8 right, approach, maintain 2 1 0 knots. Maintain 2 1 0 knots and clear the quiet bridge, visual 2 8 right, version 4 Romeo Heavy. That's cool. Good for British, and uh, I'm sorry, good for Virgin, because they followed the visual. They received the information about this 777 right here, which is the United. Do you have it inside? Yes, we have it inside. Now report when you have the traffic inside and also the airport, which they did. And finally, received the clearance for a visual approach. And a couple of minutes later, you have both heavies. Let's go closer. We have both heavies intercepting visual approaches, both the United, of course, in a visual approach, I can tell you, and the Virgin following the visual to do it, right? Both heavies, no problem, visual separation, whatever. European airline right here receiving a visual. By that time, Lufthansa is approaching the airport high above for their arrival. And it's at this time when Lufthansa checks in with Norco and says, we are unable for the visual, according to company SOPs, we request the ILS. Now, what is the problem for Lufthansa here and not for the Philippines? And we saw the gap just in front of the frontier for Philippines. Lufthansa, when we arrived overhead the airport, there's a great stream of arrivals coming from the east, but also a good stream of arrivals 
coming from the south so those gaps in between the arrivals from the north they're going to be tighter when they get closer to the local edge because now unlike when the Philippines uh, came in now we have also arrivals coming from the south so it's going to be more difficult to build that gap or to find that gap to have Lufthansa, I'm sorry this one to have Lufthansa uh, come in so uh, yeah I think that's the difference we have a very big stream of arrivals there just when Lufthansa is receiving vectors you still have the stream of arrivals here and also we have arrivals from the south so yeah it was a very coincidence situation for the Lufthansa because the ILS coordinating the ILS for them was not an easy task for the controller so I'm not defending anyone I'm just showing you uh, the facts here we have a gap this is a perfect gap between United 1012 and United 1401 actually make uh, keep in mind that maybe in between might be some corporate jets or business jets that some of them da don't appear on flight radar but let's consider this is a a real gap between 1012 and 1401 what's the problem now that we cannot fill you in right now because we are also busy from the south we have this one we have this one we have more airplanes coming from the south so building that gap for you is not easy now because we have the stream from the east and also the stream from the west and south so yeah it was a coincidence it was just a the wrong time for Lufthansa to be there by the time this stream ends where's Lufthansa now? this is Lufthansa? okay we have no more arrivals from the south we have a good gap here to the east 1259 and 2181 come on Lufthansa this is your time and this time is when they are deciding to divert to Oakland again wrong time maybe it was their time to divert because if not you are going below your minimum fuel but again wrong time and that was a coincidence it's nobody's fault what happened here is nobody's fault and that's my understanding it's nobody's fault not the controllers they were doing their job maybe the attitude you can go okay the, the more angry or more rude or you have you, you can keep you, you have to keep your cool uh, that's okay but they were doing their job and a good job and of course Lufthansa were doing their job too they accepted the delays when they were running out of fuel they decided to divert which is the correct call what I think here is it's nobody's fault it was just the wrong time in a busy airspace so let's continue reading uh, that night it was already a significantly busy arrival push there were airplanes being held in center airspace waiting for their slot to come inbound I'm assuming you heard the whole recording and how busy controllers were. I know YouTube has time constraints and you want to get to the point with your videos. Yeah, that's something you also have to understand when you say in the comments that, hey, um, you trimmed all the important things. No, I did not. I tried to include all the important conversations. But of course, I cannot make or edit. It's time consuming and, and and it's not good for the audience so you have to please consider that as well audio could have been included people think Lufthansa was the only airplane in the sky and the controller was just being a jerk of course you can see that Lufthansa was definitely not the only airplane in the sky well I personally try not to have an attitude with the pilots even when I'm frustrated this controller was trying to deal with a ton of traffic and just didn't have time to argue with or explain to the Lufthansa pilot why he is being delayed for the ILS and what rules we have to follow it can be done in a phone call after which to my knowledge happened and the pilot was told everything I'm telling you it was reviewed by management and they told the controller that he did a fine job he was busy and needed to move on which is why he told the pilot that this conversation is over and it's not a rude comment I have more many more airplanes to control and many more airplanes to handle so of course I cannot and don't take this as a rude comment I cannot continue talking to you about this I have more airplanes to vector and to sequence for arrival 
uh, I have to continue working so um, it's your choice you can continue to hold or you can divert divert or continue to wait for a slot it's the pilot's call but he didn't have time to continue the back and forth with them I totally understand that as well I don't think the ILS was down and we have already seen that it was not otherwise I would expect the pilots to know that and not request it they like to do maintenance on them while we're using visuals but usually they just take one to a left or to a right and the other one will still work what we've learned to do since these all started and what I like to do when someone requests the ILS is tell them I can vector to the localizer glide slope and you can track that inbound but can you still ha take a visual approach once you get the airport inside? If so, then I'm able to use visual separation and everything's fine. They're just backing up a visual approach with the localizer, which we usually do. I don't fly in the United States, I'm a pilot in the European, um, in Europe, but uh, if I don't know every time we we load up or we expect a visual approach, we end up just loading up the ILS or the localizer or whatever other instrument approach just for reference. It's okay. It's situational awareness too. With the localizer, which is fine for 99.99% of these guys requesting the ILS. In this case, the controller asked if he could still do a visual separation at night, and the pilot said no to that specifically. So he had to wait. So some people were saying in the comments, I understand these are not real pilots, or um, I don't know, because a real pilot wouldn't wouldn't ever say this. But they say, okay, Lufthansa, just declare an emergency, a fuel emergency, it just goes straight back to San Francisco, which is your intended airport. And of course, they didn't do that, and I don't think any good pilot would do that just for for ego purposes. So here's a difference between minimum fuel, which is totally normal to declare, and it's actually not declare, it's an information, it's an advisory for the controllers. The difference between minimum fuel and emergency fuel, or mayday fuel, which we use in, in Europe. So minimum fuel, according to the FAA, if an aircraft declares a state of minimum fuel, inform any facility to whom control jurisdiction jurisdiction, I'm sorry, is transfer of the minimum fuel problem be alert for any occurrence which might delay the aircraft en route. Use of the term minimum fuel indicates recognition by a pilot that the fuel supply has reached a state where, upon reaching destination, the pilot cannot accept any undue delays. This is not an emergency situation, but merely an advisory that indicates an emergency situation is possible should any undue delay occur. A minimum fuel advisory does not imply a need for traffic priority. Common sense and good judgment will determine the extent of assistance to be given in minimum fuel situations. If at any time the remaining usable fuel supply suggests the need for traffic priority to ensure safe landing, the pilot should declare an emergency and should report remaining fuel level in minutes. So yeah, uh, I will not go to through uh, most of this you can read it, it's in the FAA uh, but the difference for me and according to what we usually use in uh, in Europe is the minimum fuel is when you're going to reach your destination after you are receiving some delay for whatever reason just by that time when you are reaching your final reserve fuel if you're just above the final reserve fuel and any more delays will be will result in you going below that final reserve fuel that is a minimum fuel any time you are planning to reach your destination or your alternate or whatever runway you are going to just above your final reserve fuel if for any reasons any further delay any further vectors or whatever you are planning or you are calculating to land just within and inside that final reserve fuel imagine your final reserve fuel is 700 pounds if you're going to land at 699 pounds you then declare emergency fuel because you are landing below your final reserve requested so that's the difference between minimum fuel and emergency fuel hope to uh, clear things a bit 
so and again thank you very much for watching uh, and see you in the next video